They run right into traffic, repeatedly. It's just unbelievable to watch. It's disturbing video, viewed by millions. It defies any logical explanation. Dark twists. They're accused of murder. Troubling rumors. Conspiracy theories, cover-ups. What's the real story behind these women's bizarre behavior? It's disturbing and it's endlessly fascinating. 40-year-old identical twins from Sweden wandered out onto one of Britain's busiest motorways. The shocking story begins on Saturday, May 17th, 2008, on the M6 highway near Liverpool, England. Cameras capture something alarming. Two women walking in the middle of the highway, dangerously close to speeding cars and trucks. Then, both women suddenly jump the median and run headfirst into the fast lane. Incredibly, neither one of them appears to be seriously injured. Then, all hell breaks loose. Both women dash into traffic a second time hurling themselves literally onto a highway with, with cars barreling down the road. What would possibly compel anyone to do this? It's a nightmarish scene. One woman is run over by a semi-truck. The other slams into a car's windshield. And yet somehow, they're both still alive. The superhuman strength is very alarming. Police soon learn that the women are twin sisters. Twins who seem to be invincible. Astonishingly, within minutes of being knocked unconscious, one of them gets up again. If you've just run into the highway and been smashed, how is it possible that they can get up from that kind of assault? Adding to the mayhem, the twins begin hitting and spitting at police officers and screaming about people not being real. You're not the police. You're not the police. I don't believe you're the police. They acted really strangely. Delusional words, they're going to kill me. They're going to steal your organs. What is behind this bizarre behavior? 45 minutes after it all begins, the twins are finally sedated and taken to the hospital. But who are these women? And what are they doing on that motorway? As video of the twins throwing themselves into traffic goes viral, everyone struggles to make sense of the madness. What the hell were they running for? Police identify the twins as Sabina and Ursula Eriksson. They learn that on May 16th, the twins, who were born in Sweden, traveled to England from Ireland. Ursula, who is living in the US at the time, is in Ireland visiting Sabina, who lives there with her partner. At 8.30 a.m. on May 17th, the twins stop into the St. Anne Police Station in Liverpool, England. They report concerns about the safety of Sabina's children back in Ireland. Really irate and quite fearful and sort of uh, acting a bit crazed and in fear of their children's life who have been kidnapped. But when police call Sabina's partner in Ireland, he says he has no idea what they're talking about, and the children are fine. Just seven hours later, at 3.30 p.m., the twins are hurling themselves into traffic. By 11 p.m. that evening, even though she was struck by two cars and knocked unconscious, Sabina is chatting calmly with police. One minute she's spewing rage, and the next minute it's like, la di da Her sister Ursula is hospitalized in critical condition. She smashed her legs to pieces. She had her skull cracked. But Sabina is released from the hospital after just five hours, then taken into custody for assaulting an officer and trespassing on the highway. She tells police very little, and they're stumped. There's no indication that the sisters have any prior criminal history or mental illness, and blood tests reveal no signs of drugs or alcohol. 
there's delusional affect that is going on here, and you wonder, where does that come from? On May 19th, Sabina pleads guilty to trespassing. She's sentenced to one day in custody and is quickly released. No psychiatric evaluation is ever performed. After what has just occurred, how do you let her go without at least doing some kind of mental status exam? Later that night, around 9 p.m., Sabina is spotted standing outside a church in the town of Stoke-on-Trent by two local men, 54-year-old Glenn Hollinshead and his friend, Peter Malloy. She was holding this big wad of money and asking them that they know where any local bed and breakfasts are. Sabina seems distressed. She tells the strange men that her sister is in the hospital and she needs to find her. Glenn's brother works at the hospital, so he offers to help Sabina. She follows the men back to Glenn's house so they can figure things out. They've started to have a few beers, they started talking. But something about Sabina seems off. She was jumping up at the window. She seemed to be under fear that she was someone was watching her. Peter's picked up a packet of cigarettes and he said, do you mind if I take one? And she said, no, not them, they could be poison. According to Peter, he decides to leave, but Sabina stays. Glenn tells her she can crash at his place for the night. The next afternoon, a neighbor says Glenn stops by asking to borrow some tea bags. Glenn says he'll be right back for them, but that never happens. Glenn staggered back outside the house, holding his chest. He said, she's killed me. A few minutes later, CCTV cameras capture an image of Sabina. Sabina had stabbed Glenn four times. She had then fled the house. She had a hammer in her, in her hand, hitting herself over the head. That's when a 17-year-old boy named Josh spots her. I just remember these huge, wide eyes. She seemed small and alone and afraid. Josh is in a car with his mother. He asks her to pull over and jumps out to help. I didn't know that this person was a murderer. I just saw someone who was trying to kill themselves. She had the mallet and she was like striking herself in the face. And like her, her hair, hair was like matted with blood. As Josh wrestles the hammer away from Sabina, she pulls a roof tile out of her pocket. She started getting, getting angry. She was kind of grunting at me. She hit me over the head and then she ran to the overpass and there's, there's like a 40 foot bridge. Sabina jumps into traffic again. This time, she breaks both ankles and fractures her skull. The bizarre story takes an even more tragic turn when Glenn Holland's head is pronounced dead before an ambulance can even get him to a hospital. Sabina and Ursula are now both in intensive care what is it about these twins? They had this fight in them, a kind of primitive rage. They're intent, seemingly, on causing destruction. Is their mysterious rampage finally over? Or is there still more to come? Tonight, a Swedish woman who ran into the path of oncoming traffic on the M6 motorway and later killed a man has pleaded guilty to manslaughter. In September 2009, Sabina Erickson is sentenced to five years for the murder of Glenn Holland's head. Her twin, Ursula, is never charged with a crime. She's released from the hospital four months after the sisters fling themselves onto that highway and immediately heads to Sweden. Will we ever understand the story behind their madness? The sisters I recommend a suicide pact. If it comes to the crunch, Let's just kill ourselves. But why? Author David Kahn, who wrote a book about the twins, believes there's some kind of cover-up involved with connections to the police themselves. Kahn bases his theory on what he calls a series of green lights, where police keep giving the sisters a break. On May 17, 2008, just a few hours before the crazy motorway scene, the twins are kicked off a bus for strange behavior. But even though police are told the sisters might have a bomb, 
they hardly ask them any questions. Three plus police officers went up and said, hello, who are you? OK, go. Ken also wants to know why Sabina wasn't held longer after the motorway madness. And they ran onto the M6, acted crazy, then after only five hours, released. Some people have suggested that maybe the twins were part of some top secret government experiment on mind control. But at Sabina's trial, the theory that's presented is that Sabina was mentally ill at the time of Glenn's murder. The defense argues that the twins were inflicted with a rare disorder that causes temporary madness. Folie à deux, madness of two, literally from the French, is a shared psychotic disorder. Psychotic delusions from one person are transmitted to another. One sister is literally influencing the other. It's a fascinating theory, but a controversial one. There really is just anecdotal evidence that this is what is going on. Anything is possible, but my first inclination is to ask, they're running right into danger, but what are they in fact actually running from? Could the sisters' inexplicable behavior be driven by some kind of trouble in their past? David Kahn reports that the twins had a difficult upbringing in Sweden and were exposed to alcoholism and abuse. This is the kind of environment where rage can develop because if you're mistreated, that can build up a rage inside of you. You'll incubate that rage, keep it under wraps, you know, as long as possible. Sometimes a match gets lit to it and bad things happen. After her release from prison in 2011, Sabina disappears. Ursula is believed to be living quietly in the US. The sisters have never spoken publicly about their unforgettable rampage. And they may be the only ones who will ever know the truth behind it.